Welcome to another FPL video. I'm going to show you the best wildcard team and at the very end I'll be talking about the best free hit team aka the best team specifically for Gamic 32 so let's get straight into it. Feel free to suggest your own alternatives down in the comment section below but if you can afford it and you would be willing to have two keepers around 4.8 million and above I would go for Kasper Schmeichel and Aaron Ramsdale but you also have the possibility of just having a second goalkeeper like Ben Foster. Now I've gone for Kasper Schmeichel because of the sheer number of doubles he has and also some very top quality fixtures. He's got doubles in 33, 36 and 37 which makes him an immensely appealing option. Leicester have improved in recent games. They are still considering the odd goal but defensively they are definitely much better than they were throughout most of the campaign. And as for Aaron Ramsdale there is the argument that he hasn't really been returning for a long period of time now and to be fair he was a bit unlucky in Gamic 30 missing out through injury otherwise that could have been another clean sheet for him against Aston Villa but I still think he's one of the best options in goal especially in terms of value you can always go for Mendy or Allison. I've seen a lot of people talk about this and also ask why can't I just go for these players and the main reason really is because around that same price you can get someone like Reese James from Chelsea who has a lot of attacking for it as well I can get bonus points and then in Allison's case instead of him you can get Salah in midfield Luis Diaz, Jota, etc. And in defence, of course, you can get Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold who just offer much better value for money, even if they're more expensive. So I'd go for these two goalkeepers. Let me know if there's anyone else you'd go for. There is Nick Pope who also has a few more doubles along the way, but I just don't trust Burnley as much defensively as I do with Arsenal and Leicester have been improving. So I would go with these two goalkeepers. I personally would go very big at the back with Joao Cancelo. He's the kind of missing piece here because I've got the rest of them in my team. And I think that if you want to go for one Man City defender, it has to be him. But Laporte also offers pretty good value for money as well. And Reese James is a bit of an interesting one because Chelsea have been all over the place recently. They conceded four goals to Brentford and then yesterday night they conceded three to Real Madrid. So things aren't quite right at Chelsea at the moment. But those are two games and I still think Reese James and Chelsea can bounce back but only time will tell and I still think Rhys James is one of the best defenders in the game. There is the possibility to, to go for someone cheaper potentially and maybe save a bit of money there to invest in your midfield but I still would go for Rhys James and go very big at the back. As you can see the cheapest defender is Matt Doherty who is 4.9 million now and he is offering great value and Spurs have scored the most goals in this calendar year so far and they are offering great value. Doherty can also get the goals and assists as he has proven more Multiple times this season and then Robertson and Trent are kind of no-brainers they're still fighting for the title and defensively who do you prefer Liverpool or City it's quite even between the two I would maybe slightly prefer City for clean sheets and that's why Joao Cancelo is in this team as well but with those two Liverpool fullbacks I think their attacking threat is probably the best of any of these defenders and probably two of the best options in the entire game so I would go for Trent and Robertson you don't have to though and you might want to go about this differently. Maybe go for a few more doublers in 33 like Fabian Scher. But I personally would go bigger the back. You can always free hit in Gamic 33 and then focus on having a solid team for the rest of the season. Remember Chelsea are going to have plenty of doubles such as in Gamic 36 and 37. Manchester City will probably have a double either in Gamic 36 or 37 against Wolves. And Spurs obviously have that double in 36. So despite the fact that maybe this defence isn't riddled full of people with double game weeks they still have some down the line and you can always free hit in gimmick 33 to rectify things and ultimately I think this is the best defense on offer. Due to budget constraints I've come up with this midfield and this team overall there are a few alternatives as well as always. Kulisevsky is probably the main missing piece he's offering great value at the moment you could go for him over Jared Bowen but I really like the West Ham winger for these next two games and as for Gordon he's just a fifth midfielder my overall squad value is 105.3 million so you might be able to go for someone like Martinelli instead or someone who's just a better option than Gordon he's just there to sit on your bench and whenever you need him he could potentially have a few doubles later down the line as has already been confirmed by the Premier League I've gone for Hume Ming Son and the kind of main premium that is missing out is Mohamed Salah. There's always a few others like Cristiano Ronaldo and Bruno Fernandes who have that double in 33. But as I already said, with this team, you can free hit in Gamic 33 and focus on the rest of the season with this squad. But I really like Hume Ming Son and in the last two games he's been 
just pretty much exceptional. He's been fantastic, even outperforming Harry Kane. Having both of them could be really good for you. And it would be ideal to have four Spurs players with Doherty, Son, Kane and possibly Kulisevsky. But that, of course, is impossible. We've gone for James Madison. He also has that double in 33. So if you decide to use the free hit on another occasion, then he could be a really good option for Gimmick 33. Also has those doubles in 36 and 37 and some very good fixtures, just like with Kasper Schmeichel. And then Jared Bowen, he's very good for these next two games but he does have some tricky games remaining until the end of the season against Manchester City, Arsenal and Chelsea. So maybe that would be the most controversial pick here. So let me know if you would change Jared Bowen, but I still think he offers great value and can perform in these big games. But Kayo Saka has that double in 36. Some good fixtures overall, and I really like Saka's prospects. He still offers great value. There is a debate between him and Kulisevsky, but once again, we already have three Spurs players nailed down, and I think this is probably the best way to go about it. Salah is still a great option, and we shouldn't discount him completely, but on a wild card, I would be tempted to go away from him. So let me know, will you be keeping Salah? If you are playing your wild card very soon, do you think he's going to be in your plans? And now let's move on to the forwards, which isn't our favourite position this season, to say the least. Harry Kane has to be nailed on as your striker. He is the only one that is not up for debate. As for the rest, you could go for any other option. None of them are really going to offer you that certainty and consistency. I've always talked about this in recent videos. I think Mateta, Tony, Kucha Hernandez, Harry Kane, and maybe those that double a lot, like, say, Maximan, uh, Iheanacho, and also Vekhorst, may could also be under consideration. But I would go for these three right now. Mateta also scored against Arsenal. He's been showing a bit of consistency in all competitions. Ivan Tony, as I talked about in my transfer tips, has seven goals in his last eight appearances with one assist and some decent underlying numbers, such as an XG of around five. So he is doing the business. Harry Kane is not up for debate. But Ivan Tony, yes, he might not have doubles, but what he does have is form, which is very hard to come by with the forwards right now. So which changes would you make to the forward line and also to the rest of the team? I can imagine there's going to be a few disagreements around here. No Salah would still be something that a lot of people will disagree with, and I can understand that, to be fair. But I think it could be a really good chance to separate yourself from the rest. There's also a few other premiums, Bruno Fernandes, Cristiano Ronaldo, that you could get in place of the Spurs duo because of their double in 33, and that way you can avoid using the free hit there. And for those of you that have no free hit left, maybe this wild card wouldn't be the best for you. And in that case, I would stack more on the double game because, you know, those Newcastle players, you can go for Fraser in midfield, you can go for, say, Maximan up front, and potentially a second goalkeeper like Dubravka or Fabian Scher in defence. Those United attackers I already discussed. So there's no one set way to play the game, but I think for those of you that have one or two free hits, this is a very good team, and yes, it might not be the best for Gimmick 33 specifically, but it's very good until the end of the season, which is more important. The wild card has a long-term effect and shouldn't be aimed to just maximise one game week in particular. In terms of the captaincy, I think it'd be very simple. You'd go for one of the Spurs players in this case, and I'd probably go for Harry Kane because of his Premier League away record in general throughout Premier League history, and then the vice-captain could be Son or potentially someone else, but I think I'd mainly lean towards those two. Joao Cancelo, Trent, Robertson, they all play each other. I'm not expecting a clean sheet for either team, but they still offer great value until the end of the season. So now I'm going to show you the best free hit team specifically for Game Week 32. Despite Arsenal's abysmal performance against Crystal Palace on Monday night, I still think Arsenal have a good chance of keeping a clean sheet against Brighton, who have struggled a lot all season, especially in the last few months. I don't know what's happening there. There's always Malpai who could come up to horn Arsenal again and Brighton, Arsenal. It has been a bit of a tricky fixture for the Gunners in recent years, but I still think I'd go for Ramsdale. And you look at all the other options, Alisson and Edison are playing each other. There is possibly Mendy that could be up for debate, but I still think I'd go for Ramsdale and focus more on the starting 11, those outfield players that are probably going to be more important. I don't see many keepers with a high ceiling this week. I could be wrong. And the second goalkeeper is Foster with the free hit, remember. You want to maximise your starting 11. Maybe have one or two decent options on the bench, but you really want to focus on those players that are starting. So Ramsdale, for me, is probably one of the best keepers this week, if not the best. What hasn't changed too much from the wildcard team is the defence. Really, there's no trend. That's the big difference. And we've gone for Amati as that cheap fifth defender. And you could arguably start Doherty, James, Robertson and Cancelo. It's a bit of a tricky one because City and Liverpool are playing each other. I don't really expect a clean sheet there. But both Cancelo and Robertson can get an attack in return. Let me know what would you change for the best free hit team in Gimmick 32. Would you actually just exclude all these City 
and Liverpool players, would you maybe go for one or two of their assets, but maybe not in defence? Instead, you would go for their attack. Let me know. I'd be curious to know. I still think Reese James and Chelsea can bounce back, and I think he's a great option this week. I don't think there's that many great options in the defence this week. Doherty might actually be one of the very best because of the fixture as well. So this is the five I'm going for, but I recognise that it might not be everyone's cup of tea. We've also gone for Saka in this team, and he's probably one of the best options around his price this week, along with Kulusevski. Jarrah Bowen could be very good against Brentford, despite their very good form. That should be a pretty interesting game between Brentford and West Ham, that London derby. Bruno Fernandes facing Everton. I mean, he's a good purchase even without the free hit because he has that double in 33. Yes, he faces Liverpool, but he also faces Norwich, which is what most people would captain him and Ronaldo for. And Hume Ming Son is a great captaincy option and having him and Kane on the free hit is probably ideal. You can still go for Salah, but I personally wouldn't go for it this week. I don't think his ceiling is that high, although you never know and we can be proven wrong. I remember his performance in the 2-2, different circumstances. He was in the form of his life. Right now, he is struggling a little bit more, but Salah still has some very good underlying numbers. And Dewsbury Hall is our fifth midfielder, the budget option. And to be fair, on the wild card, you could also go for him instead of Gordon and you save a little bit more money. And Dewsbury Hall is putting in some very excellent performances. So this is the midfield five for this week. You'd obviously start Saka, Bowen, Fernandes and Son. Dewsbury Hall would be on the bench. And now let's go on to the attackers to conclude this video. Hurricane's going to feature in all these videos pretty much the wildcard free hit teams and just in the transfer tips I've already talked about him plenty of times so he's not probably going to feature again in that but he's just going to be in this team. He's a great captaincy option. He'd be the captain in this free hit team as well just like with the wildcard team although you could make a case for Bruno Fernandes against Everton and we've gone for Timo Puki. This could be an interesting one against Burnley. I think Puki could get a return here and it's good to be different on the free hit sometimes, not just for the sake of it, but if you back a player like Puki with low ownership to produce the goods, then why not go for him? Despite West Ham being a tough opponent, I still think Tony can score. So I think this is a good front free for the free hit and once again, not too many great options. Maybe Iheanacho could be one to consider. Richarlison did well in the double game week, but he is facing Manchester United. So let me know what you think of this free hit team. Probably not as strong as the wildcard squad, but it's still pretty decent nonetheless. And if I were free hitting I would be putting this team together but just a kind of word of advice I probably would not be using the free hit this week I've seen a few people ask if I should use it or not I would save it for 33 36 or 37 if you have two free hits that's great if you also have the bench boost then that would be probably better utilized than 36 unless you already have a very good 15 man squad in 33 and then you can use the free hits in 33 and 37 I don't think gimmick 32 is the right time to use it but thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video or found it useful smash the like button and subscribe if you're new let me know if you disagree with any of this of course it's all up for debate and it's all about opinions so I would be interested to know you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram Dylan RCM there's also a discord server the link is in the description below and you can also join the channel as a channel member and also on patreon so check that out you can get exclusive early access to all my videos so take care enjoy the football good luck with gimmick 32 and the same goes for ucl fantasy match day 10 more content coming for that next week and i'll see you next time